Hey everybody, welcome back to Gideon Stuff. Glad to have you here, whether you're a returning viewer or a new one. Welcome. Today we're taking a look at this knife here, the CRKT Facet, designed by Ken Onion. This is a really cool little knife. Um, I'm very excited about this review. So let's go ahead and get it started right away with our blade length measurements and size comparisons and all that good stuff. Blade length coming in here, just a smidge under three and a half inches for all intents and purposes. I think you can call this a three and a half inch knife. Um, handle length, about four inches. Alrighty, let's go ahead and get our comparison knives out here. Sit up. There we go. First up is our Ontario Rat 2 and the Rat 1. Very sleek, slender knife, as you can see right there. Alrighty, next up, let's bring out our uh, Savivis. There's the Elementum. And there's the Praxis. Um, yeah. Yeah, again, a very narrow, slender knife. Not super long, though. Uh, it's definitely a you know, reasonably lengthed knife. Lengthed. Is that a word? Lengthed. Gosh, I hope not. That's kind of gross. Let's forget I said that. Uh, PM2 and the bug out. Very similar in overall length to the bug out. Very similar indeed. Alrighty, and let's go ahead and uh, let's compare against some uh, other uh, CRKTs. This is the Montosa, one of my favorite CRKTs ever. And this is the CEO, which I think kind of explains itself here. Kind of the same genre of knife. But there we go. Alrighty. What are we looking at for our materials here? We have a D2 steel blade. And uh, it's a steel frame lock. I thought the scale here was aluminum, but it is steel. Oh, wow. That's a nice little mark on there. <laughs> so, yeah, D2 steel blade, steel frame lock, steel deep carry pocket clip. Uh, let's go ahead and go to the cutting footage, shall we? Alrighty, guys. You ready to do some review cutting? I sure am, because the knife we're talking about today is, without giving away too many spoilers, one that I'm actually very fond of. CRKT Facet. Designed by Ken Onion. You guys have already heard the spiel at the table, even though I haven't recorded it yet. I do review cutting first. Um, yeah, I've had this knife for quite some time, and we're ready to do the review cutting. So, let's go ahead and start off with the action. It's assisted. That's going to turn a lot of people off right away. I know. Right? I know. A lot of a lot of us hate assists. I'm not the biggest fan of assists. Although I do um, think they have their place. However, this is CRKT's new assist, which is really interesting to me. Because as you saw there, the blade was able to drop to kind of this half stop position. Um, it's on bearing, so it's very smooth. And a lot of assists don't do this. And then as you go to close it, you reach a certain point where it sucks the blade in. It has a bias towards closure. I think that's a term I first heard used by David C. Anderson over at the Knife Center. Shout out to them. Um, but yeah, as far as the Cisco, I actually dig it. I think it's fine. It fires out. Like, it rockets out. It feels like it's an auto. And then closing it's actually... I find it to be pretty satisfying. You know, I don't really have a whole lot of complaints with it. So, yeah. One thing I will say is, you know, it has a very low profile flipper tab, which is jimmed really well, and you have a nice area to get to. But there are a couple of times where I just kind of like got it wrong. And let's see if I can do this on pur I'm not gonna be able to do this on purpose. It only happened like once or twice, but where I just kind of pushed the knife out, I don't know, just a little bit. Can you de-assist it? I did try. 
Um, I will put in video footage of that after the review cutting, so if you're interested in that, stick around to see the disassembly of this knife. Okay, how are the ergonomics? Really, really excellent, actually. Um, very neutral, as you can see here, very neutral ergos, not a whole lot going on, but in the hand, it just feels great. It feels legitimately great. Um, it's a, I mean, obviously it's a very short handle this way. It's not super wide, but it is not contoured, but these, these scales here are chamfered in such a way that it feels contoured and it fills your hand really well. The steel scales are done incredibly nicely. In fact, I thought they were aluminum at first, but they are steel. They feel fantastic. There's no hot spots really. The jimping up here is perfect. Look at that. That's beautiful jimping. That's that great file-like jimping I'm always on about. I love seeing that. That's something that has been a thing since day one on this channel is I very, very seldom see jimping that is done perfectly. This is a great example. The entire little thumb ramp here is jimped and it's it's very grabby, like my thumb is not going anywhere, but it's not aggressive, it's not painful, it's just beautiful. If you want, you can kind of do a little bit of a trigger pull, a uh, trigger um, choke up grip here, get behind that edge. Also very, very comfortable and because of that jimping, you're very securely locked in. So yeah, the ergonomics on this thing are excellent. Much better than most knives in this type of genre typically are. You know, the, the gentlemanly style gents knife. Gentlemanly style gents knives. I, it's redundant. Um, but you guys know what I mean, right? These kind of classier knives. Get off me. You got all kinds of flies and bugs on me. Um, these kind of knives typically don't have the greatest ergos because they're narrow and stuff. CEO style knives, I guess, is what I was kind of looking for. But this one has fantastic ergonomics. So I love to see that. Okay. How does it carry? Well, it is very slim. It folds up into a very nice compact shape. The flipper tab's very non-intrusive or obtrusive, whatever you want to say. In the pocket, perfect. Out, feels great. In, out, in, out. It works fine. This pocket clip is perfect. And I say that with no exaggeration. This is a perfect pocket clip a perfect pocket clip. And that's something that CRKT consistently does that I don't think they get enough credit for is they do really good pocket clips. In fact, they might do the best pocket clips in the game. That's a bold statement, but I mean, I have so many pocket clips. I think of the pocket clip on the um, Montosa, the Tuna, this, they're just perfect. Look, you have enough ramp that it goes in and out of your pocket, but doesn't stab you in the hand. That's excellent completely inset with flat screws. The only thing this pocket clip does that's wrong is it's not reversible. And that is that is kind of a shame. While we have this view here, let's give you guys some, some beauty shots here. I do think this is just a gorgeous looking knife. Even the budget version here. I mean, I know they've got the premium ones, but uh, this one looks great to me as well. All right, let's go ahead and get started with our um, cutting. So we have a spade point blade here, which means we can get down, do some very nice uh, push cuts. I've got some averages on here, so we'll just be cognizant of that. Uh, I didn't mention before, but D2 steel. The sharpening was pretty wonky on this. In fact, it still is. I have not resharpened this. Um, it's still got an edge though. Talk about the address issue as I just, you know, flash them everywhere. Whatever. <laughs> this knife is not a laser beam. As you can see there, I mean, it's got a very narrow blade. Narrow blades are rarely razor beams. Razor beams. Oh my gosh. I'm in the laser beams. But, and it's got a fairly thick stock. However, it does cut and uh, it will work, you know, just fine. Okay, let's go ahead and grab our rope here. There we go, there we go, there we go. Very nice, very nice. I imagine it'll do really good on this test. It's got the right blade shape for it, the right mass. Let's see. Oh yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, very, very strong geometry behind the edge. No problem crunching through that rope whatsoever. Do you want an edge that is this thick and this robust on your gents carry? I don't know. But at the same time, you know, it, it seems kind of counterintuitive. This is more like a hard use type of grind. However, what are you going to be using this for? I know when I was carrying this um, for my desk job, uh, I was using it, you know, I cut a couple of labels, cut some strings, things like that. Tasks that really just require a sharp edge. I'm not necessarily a thin one. So, you know, give and take. All right, let's do our pull noodle. And guess what I found in my truck under the seat? This is the pull noodle we were using, I don't even know how long ago, but I thought I'd used it all up and lost it. I guess not, here it is. This is the pool noodle that we've been using for the last couple of months. I go through these pretty quick, you know, for only doing two to three, maybe four cuts per video. But um, yeah, we've got this guy back. So let's go ahead and uh, use him. Okay. All right. This first one was already, we're gonna try and do that again. Let's go with very, very thin. Okay, well, when I tried to go super thin, I could definitely feel that thick geometry working against me. The wavy sharpening, I did feel, you know, kind of binding up as it went through the pool noodle, but honestly, not very bad. Not bad at all. Uh, for a blade of this size, I think it's perfectly fine. Um, some people might not, but I think it's good. Alrighty, that's gonna be it. For review cutting, let's go ahead and go not back to the table. Let's go to the disassembly um, and then to the table. See you over there. So here's a CRKT facet taken apart. There's your blade. Uh, this is a good opportunity to talk about. Oh, shoot. That's what went flying. That made that little noise. The stop in. Oh, but there it is on the floor. Yay. There we go. Okay, I found it. Uh, this is a good time to talk about why this is a true internal stop pin instead of the... You guys have heard me rant and rave before about how internal stop pins are incorrectly labeled. But, and yes, I'm doing this freehand. I don't have my um, camera stand. But yeah, so there's the blade. Whoa, there we go. And see, the stop pin, it stays there and the blade just rotates around <laughs> the stop pin. This is awful. Yeah, there we go. So that's a true internal stop pin. Okay, so there's that. Here's the bearings that are inside this guy. Little tiny, tiny bearings. I think they're steel bearings. Um, wow, they're so tiny I can't even get a grip, grip on them. Yeah, pretty itty bitty. Um, the hardware on this is terrible. This knife was a pain in the butt to take apart, even with Weehaw bits and stuff. I was stripping the hardware, getting it back together is going to be a pain, but we need to take this out, remove that spring, put it all back together, and see if we have sufficient detent um, to give us a manual knife instead of an assisted one. Alrighty, so yeah, you can't de assist the uh, facet. Unfortunately, I lost my battle with it. Um, technically, it works. Let's see, there's a the centering. Pretty good. Flicks out. Closes. So it did technically work. However, the I mean, the closing action is really, really satisfying now. But the deploying action is not as satisfying as it was when it was assisted. And the lighting is just horrible right now, I apologize. Again, you can get it out there, but this is like the weakest detent ever. So, I mean, that's kind of a shame. The assisted action, though, I didn't mind, really. It was it was fine. It's not helping the angle. 
I'm gonna put that spring back in there. There's the spring. Again, I mean, technically it works. But it's, yeah, it's nowhere near as, um, as satisfying as it was. Maybe I could bend in the lock bar. Strength and detail, I don't know. I don't think I'm going to bother with it. You know, the assisted action was very, very snappy and very good. So I think I'm going to put it back in. And I don't, I don't hate assists. So I'll be able to live with it. But yeah, for any of you who absolutely do hate assists, Technically, you can do it. This knife has been de-assisted, and it was a success. There is no blade play or anything, um, but to me, it just it really did feel better with the spring in there. Yeah, that's just it's very mushy. You really got to give it some juice to flick it, but let's put it back together. All righty, guys, we're back. Let's go ahead and start talking about what I'm liking and not liking about this very cool little knife. First of all, this design is beautiful in so many ways. Ken Onion, obviously he's an OG knife designer. He's, he's a goat. Um, absolutely classic, classic designs. And you can really see a lot of his mastery over knife design language coming through here in so many small details. Number one, I mean, yeah, it's a clean, sleek, classy look just right off the bat, which I really appreciate. But there's a lot of other things that just stand out to me as beautiful small details. One of which is up here, where we can see that the flipper tab and this little part of the um, scales are the same angle. They line up. I think that's cool. And not only that, but when we close the knife, this is all flush. Very minimal flipper tab. And no matter whether the knife is closed or opened, it always aligns itself to the angles of the scales. I think that's really, really cool. We also have kind of a little bit of a mirroring effect. We have this spay point blade here, and it's kind of the same shape on the back of the knife here. Furthermore, the scales themselves, we have these, th this contouring and chamfering all around the edges that looks just gorgeous. And yes, this knife does have lots of snail trails and stuff, but you know, it's kind of to be expected. The knife is folded up. It's sleek and slim. The blade disappears almost entirely into the scales. It's just a very, very well-designed knife. And other elements of the, of the design that I really like are going to um, fall into my, the rest of my positives on this thing. So let's go ahead and get into them. Number one, the Ergos. The Ergos are fantastic. I don't feel that clip at all. The scales, I mean, it's not a fat knife, but it's got some got some girth to it. Uh, you can feel it in your hand. It, it, it's very hand filling for such a narrow knife. And I appreciate that. It feels really good in the hand. Furthermore, this jimping up here is perfect. Absolutely perfect jimping. I, I have got on my high horse several times when I'm reviewing other knives because I think so many companies do jimping wrong. So wrong, in fact, they might as well just not do jimping. This is proper jimping. We have this little bit of a raised portion of the blade here, a little bit of a thumb ramp, and they put jimping all the way down it. That's perfect. That's where my thumb lands naturally when I hold this knife, and there's jimping all the way. It's also textured perfectly. Not too sharp, but very, very grippy. It will hold your thumb in place. And I really, really like that. Another thing with the Ergos, because the flipper tab has a slant here, you can choke up a little bit, you know, do kind of the trigger pull, which I think works really well. Um, next thing, access to the lock bar is excellent. Focus up camera. Thank you. Access to the lock bar is excellent. They gave you enough cut out there. They've got some jimps on the lock bar. It's very easy to get in there. No problems. The pocket clip is, it, it's perfect. It's, uh, I think CRKT does some of the best pocket clips in the business. They, they consistently nail pocket clips. This one, they missed one thing, but I mean, I want to bring out the CRKT, 
Team Ontosa. I know a little bit of a, a tangent here, but we have a reversible clip and look at this. It's inset to the scales with flat screws. The clip doesn't have um, a, an obnoxious amount of bill. Wow, I need to slow down when I talk. <laughs> it doesn't have an obnoxious amount of bill. And this clip is much the same. It's perfect. Inset to the scales, flat screws, not a whole lot of bill here. It slides in and out of the pocket really well because of these smooth scales. It's an excellent clip. And this knife carries really well in general. Yeah, it's a little bit heavier than you might expect might expect because it is full steel. Um, but it carries really, really nicely. And uh, I, I definitely think that's that's fantastic. Out of the blister pack <laughs> that I bought this knife in, uh, it was very well put together. It was centered. Um, it was sharp. I will talk a, bit, a little bit about both those things later. But yeah, really good. Fin finish out of the box. Nice presentation. Um, I like that a whole lot. Um, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the uh, the action. Because I think this is going to be a major problem for a lot of people. And for me, it's not. I'm going to try and explain why. So this knife is assisted. But I really don't care. <laughs> I really don't care. As you saw, um, I did try and deassist this unsuccessfully. Um, but honestly, I'm fine with the action the way it is. Very minimal flipper tab. And this thing just, it rockets out. It rockets out. Very, very little pressure. And this thing feels like an automatic. Very snappy. And then when you close it, you know, it drops to there. You can close it the rest of the way. And that snap on the closure, when it just sucks the blade in. Watch this. That's very satisfying. I like that. There are ball bearings in the pivot. It's very smooth. It's, if you're going to do an assisted knife, this is the way to do it, right? I really, really like this. Um, they did a fantastic job here. So, I am not the biggest fan of assist, just like I think a lot of you aren't. But this one's okay with me. It really is. So, yeah. There we go, right? Okay, so we got all that out of the way. Let's go ahead and start talking about some negatives. Um, the sharpening on this... Oh, actually, actually, before we get into the negatives, I want to talk a little bit about something. I appreciate that CRKT used D2 steel. It would have been very easy for them to just put 8CR or uh, what are some other steels they use? 8CR, um, a 12C27 I wouldn't have been mad with. Um, OS8, they could have thrown on here. They could have put uh, 4116, which I don't like at all, but they didn't. They put D2 on here and I really appreciate that and it didn't make this knife super obnoxiously expensive. I've used the word obnoxiously a lot today. Perhaps in an obnoxious amount. Hmm. Must be my vocabulary word for the day. Um, but yeah, I really appreciate CRKT putting, <laughs> I hate to use this, but real materials. It does get very, very old to see, you know, great designs from world famous designers like this design here from Richard Rogers made with crappy materials, right? CRKT by and large does a good job with their build quality. I'll give them that, but their materials always just leave a little bit to be desired. And it's very frustrating sometimes when you, when you have a knife like this here, like the Montosa here, I love this knife so much. This knife is one of my favorite pocket knife designs ever, to be quite honest with you. Um, but I don't carry it that much because the blade steel is 8CR, right? And it just doesn't perform the way I want it to. And that really bums me out. I'm glad CRKT went ahead and put D2 on this. And they didn't make it super expensive. Normally when they do D2, it's on $100 knives. This was a $50 knife. And I really, really like that CRKT went and did that. So thank you, CRKT. Credit where credit is due. Another thing I'm going to say on the positives before we, look, we uh, move on to the negatives. I already kind of mentioned this, but these steel scales are 
really nice. Like this is nice steel. I'm not sure what they did, but it feels very good. I thought it was aluminum at first, but it's not, it is steel. You can see inside here, perhaps, we have extensive milling, extensive milling, which I love to see. It does bring the weight down. Again, this is still a little bit of a heavy knife, but it does bring the weight down significantly. And yeah, they just, they put a lot of work into these handles. Again, the chamfering here, the, the patterns, geometric shapes, it all shows and it, it does help the knife feel very premium and very good in the hand. And uh, yeah, I, I like it a whole lot. I really do. This backspacer here is nice as well. Um, yeah, of course, um, I'll point it out now. You know, I've been carrying and using this knife. There are snail trails and there are scuffs and marks on it. And so if that bothers you, you know, you might want to baby it a little bit, but it doesn't really bother me. Um, I like, <laughs> I like love marks on my knives. So there we go. That is fine by me. Also, there is a steel insert on this side that, that houses the spring. You guys would have seen that in the disassembly, so we're not going to go into it. Okay, moving on to our negatives. Um, let's start with this blade. The, the blade itself is not negative. In fact, I love this blade shape. Oh, that actually reminds me. There was another knife I wanted to compare this against. Let me uh, go grab it. All right, we're back. The um, Benchmade 940. And uh, yeah, I've heard a lot of people in the community make this comparison. And uh, in fact, Knife Center did a video about this. Um, yeah, it it it's very similar blade shape, a spay blade, not reverse Tonto. Um, but yeah, definitely very similar, very similar in size too. And they kind of have a, a similar feel in hand. Um, yeah, anyways, very nice blade shape. I love all the swedging and stuff. This is a great blade shape for EDC. You've got a nice tip that you can get to you know, for utility cuts and stuff, got plenty of straight edge. The issue is it is a little bit thick behind the edge. I didn't, I didn't take an exact measurement. My calipers are broken and I'm, <laughs> they've been broken for a long time. I haven't gotten them fixed yet. Um, but yeah, it is a pretty obtuse edge. Some people might not like that. Uh, it's also been sharpened pretty wonkily. Let's see if I can focus in on here. If you can see how uneven that edge bevel is, and yeah, I have not, I have not done anything to it yet. I will be fixing that. So those are definitely negatives. I will say with the thick edge, I actually don't find it to be that much of an issue. With a knife like this, I, I don't see you putting this through a whole lot of heavy duty use where you might appreciate a finer geometry, more acute edge more precision slices. This is this is something that you're gonna pull out and do a one and done cut, right? You know, you might be wearing this at a formal event or you might, you know, be wearing it in an office or, or, or something like that. And, excuse me. Sorry about that. Anyways, what I was talking about is basically, you know, just sum it up. The blade doesn't really bother me. Um, I think it's fine. It's, it cuts good. I mean, it's not gonna be a laser beam. It's not a, a super performer, um, but I don't think it's bad. I think it's fine for what this knife is. Um, and heck, you know, if you do want to push this to some harder stuff, it can probably handle it, right? So I'm not super upset about it, but some people might be. So I figured I'd mention it. Next thing that I find to be negative is this does not have a over travel stop. As you can see there, I can push the lock bar way far out. Am I going to overspring the lock? Probably not. I mean, I would assume not, but you never know, right? And so I just, I'd rather have that, that confidence, that assurance that it's never going to happen. So I definitely do wish they had one there. Um, next thing, this thing did come off, does come off center quite a bit. In fact, I think it's coming off center right now throughout this review. Yeah. Uh, you can adjust it and stuff. And I have put blue Loctite in this pivot, but it's still backing out a little, you know, it takes a few flips, but I think it's just because, you know, that blade flacks out so hard. Uh, yeah, it does loosen up the pivot. Is that a huge issue? No, not at all. So there you go. The pocket clip is not reversible. I wish it was. This pocket clip is otherwise perfect, but I'm sorry, lefties, it's not reversible. Um, I think they very easily could have made it reversible. They could have put a little plate in here on the other side, too. That would have been nice, but they decided not to for whatever reason. 
we shall never know, I guess. I also kind of wish that the lock bar cutout was on the inside. I know that's something that you usually only see on very premium knives, but you know, I'd kind of wish we see it. We saw it here. Speaking of very premium knives, yeah, there are uh, premium versions of this out now. I believe they're made in Italy. Those look amazing, but uh, we'll get to that later. Next thing, disassembly on this <laughs> was not very easy. Uh, it was actually kind of torturous. Um, way harder than it had to be, honestly. Uh, yet you cannot deassist the knife. That To me, that's kind of a negative, right? Uh, especially, I don't have this knife around anymore, but Sierra KT Tueto, I deassisted, and it worked fine without the spring in there. You know, it had the same assist, but this one, unfortunately, does not work as well. Um, but beyond that, the disassembly was just a headache. It was way harder than it needed to be. It was just just not fun. And that's something that I always hate is when a knife is not fun to disassemble. Because you have to disassemble your knives sometimes, right? They get dirty, or you just need to do maintenance. And if the knife fights you every step of the way... It's just not good. And this knife definitely did fight me every step of the way. It was very difficult to get taken apart. Um, I'm glad I finally managed it somehow. Um, but yeah, it went back together okay. It did take some fiddling and, and stuff, but uh, yeah, it did go It did go back together just fine. Um, some people might say the snail trails and stuff are a negative. I don't really care that much, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Let's go ahead and talk about my final conclusions. How much is this knife? These come in about 50 to 55 bucks. I got this one on sale for like $35. At that price point, this is like a holy cow, just blown away. At the $50 price point, I actually think this is really good. Sierra KT is not known for value, right? I mean, this knife here, the Montosa, was also a $50 knife. And did it, did it earn that price tag? No, not really. This knife, I feel like it does, though. This feels like a very premium budget knife. And, yeah, it's got the assist. People might argue, oh, they're not, that's cutting corners. I don't think so. I think the assist is done very well. And, you know, they, they put a lot of care into that. This entire knife just screams class. The Kin Onion design is masterful. The execution is very well done. And for a budget knife, it's fantastic. Now, like I was saying, they do have premium versions out there that are not assisted. They're titanium and M390, I believe. And those things are like $270 or $300. If you're interested in this knife design and you really, really want to get one, but you don't want to spend that much money, go ahead and get the budget version. If you've been holding yourself back because, oh, it's assisted and blah, don't let that hold you back. This is a fantastic knife, and I think you'll really, really enjoy it. I really enjoyed carrying this knife. Everyone I handed this knife to while I've had it, I would hand this knife to people, they all really liked it. And to me, that's a really high endorsement of a knife, is when you can hand it to someone who's a non-knife person or a knife person alike, and they both say, yeah, this is cool. I like this. You know you've got a winner on your hands. And I absolutely think this is a winner. And this is might be my favorite Sierra KT. After I bought this, I carried this quite a bit for work there in the museum. And I just, I, I loved it. It was so good. It was so nice. It's very sleek. It's very classy. And, you know, you get all of that on a budget. And to me, that is 100% a desirable thing. So... Do I recommend this knife? Yeah, I do. Absolutely. This is one of the best CRKTs I've reviewed in a while. And I'm really picky with my CRKTs. Like, I only buy a CRKT if the design really appeals to me. Because I, I, I've been let down so many times by materials, maybe some fit and finish issues and stuff. But, you know, this knife, I'm glad I jumped on it. Because the design really spoke to me. And it was executed beautifully. Yeah, there's some flaws, and yeah, there might be some things that aren't for most people, but by and large, if you like this design, I really think you'll like this knife. So, that's where I'm going to leave it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave it a like, comment below, and subscribe. 
I've been Gideon, and I'll see you in the next one. Adios.